All right, Eddie Spaghetti, are you ready? Here. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Alexa, play the Kurt Angle theme. This is WWE from Spotify. Oh, what the fuck? Playing John Cena? <laughs> no. Hey, I know. Alexa, play the Kurt Angle theme. Stupid. No Kurt Angle bitch. Theme. 8 bit version by 8 bit universe from Spotify. What the fuck is this shit, bro? Shit's already fucking up. Alexa, stop. I gotta hit this right. Alexa, yeah, bro, play the Kurt Angle call. theme. Metal Kurt Angle there we theme. go. 8-bit version by 8-bit. Oh my god, bro. Alexa, play the original Kurt Angle theme. Boo, boo's in the chat. Boo's in the chat. I need boo's in the chat, please. Alright, Alexa, just stop. Alexa, stop. Well, guys, I fucking tried. That would have been epic as fuck. But what's up, guys? Rear Naked Takes back up in this hole with the undisputed Rear Naked Takes champ. You already know what the fuck's going to go on. UFC 272 going to go down tomorrow. Ed, what's up? What's good? You ready for the smoke? I was about to give that shit to you. Street Judas, baby. Street Judas. <clears throat> you already know I'm over here sipping some. Hoo ha. Some Chihuahua. Some new beer my dad put me on. Fuck it. What's up, Ed? Let the people know what's up. <clears throat> How you been? Ready to get this this weekend going, my boy. <clears throat> That's what's up. All right, shit. Let me pull up this uh, agenda real quick, and then we get right into it. <clears throat> Ed, I have another question for you. Let's do a knock knock joke. Knock knock. <clears throat> no, I'm the one who's supposed to start it. Knock knock. Oh, who's there? Ed. Ed who? Exactly, buddy. We're over here. Team Gonzo pinned this bitch. No one knows who fucking Ed is. We're about to take this dub and retain the fucking title. Exactly, Ed. What's up, baby? You want this shit? Did he do that? You want this Did he shit? Do that at the, you want this? At the... You ain't gonna get it, baby. It's just staying home. All right. Enough for the antics. <clears throat> All right. Now let's get back. Let's get into some business. Alter ego, Gonzo. Yes, sir. But I already fucked up the intro. That shit would have been hard as fuck. Um, Fake news. Fake news. Yeah. Well, talking about news, uh, Ed, do you have anything? No. At all? No, sir. Well, Joe Rogan is back in the building. And not DC. Huh? DC's out. Family. Family stuff going on. Yeah, at least we got at least we got Joe Rogan back. Um shit. You know, there's a <clears throat> there was a, a tweet that I was sent, and I, I don't know if you saw, I don't even remember if I sent it to you. It was about uh Habib. So basically they had asked Habib that um like would he be interested in seeing a fight with Islam Hunter, right? And Habib said, of course he would, that, that he would, um, that he'd really want to see that fight and shit like that. And he would really want Islam to beat his ass again. But Habib also said that if, how, if there's like a, a magical reason that Islam loses, that he'll, that Habib said that he'll come back into the UFC and to, uh, beat the shit out of Connor. I don't know how accurate that is. I didn't do too much research, but it's apparently, yeah, apparently that they had asked them um, on on his Instagram live. So, can it happen? Yeah, it can. Will it happen? Probably not. But dude, if the if the stars align, that'd be fucking that'd be amazing. I don't come said not to get ahead of the show, but fuck Islam. Uh, uh, hey, you said it, my boy, not me. <clears throat> hey, people are gonna want to hate. It's all right, man. Haters are his motivators. 
and we keep the ball rolling. Bro, he, didn't, he didn't even take the RDA fight. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. Six. Yeah, that's, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that, but. He's off, he's off flex. Yeah, <clears throat> Bustina Islam will lose to Benil. It'd be a tough fight. I don't know if he'd lose to him, but I, I, I'm. That'd be his best matchup so far. Yeah. <clears throat> until he meets uh, Oliveira. Yep. All right, Ed. I know uh, we're on a tight schedule, so you just want to get into it? There's no other news that you want to cover? No, sir. All righty, guys. Let's get right into the picks. No time wasted here. Uh, no more alter you, Gonzo. Let's do it. Uh, UFC 272. Starting off the main card, <clears throat> we have Spivak. How do you even Sergey? Is that how you spell his name? Sergey. 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 Sergey Spivak versus Greg Hardy. Ed, quick take. What's up? What do you think? Well, I mean, we've seen. The Prince of War, Greg Hardy, um, you know, ever since he's stormed into the UFC, um, he's done, I mean, he's done decent. He's he really displayed, you know, a good amount of power, a good amount of strength. Um, but I feel like when he fights more technical fighters, he tends to get exposed. Um, I mean, he almost had to Ivasa. He was literally like a punch away from getting to Ivasa. Stunned him, went for the kill shot. Ivasa swayed, hit him with the right. Lights out. So I mean, it's not like Greg Hardy's a bum. Uh, haven't really seen too much of Sergey Spivak, but from what it looks like, is uh, Sergey's a little bit more of a technical fighter, um, in terms of you know just kind of like uh, Greg Hardy's uh, you know one one sided striking, I would say, or, or power lines. So I don't know. This to me, this is a toss up. I see why the odds are so close on this one. What do you think? Um. Yeah, dude, I, I I mean, I've seen Greg Hardy fight live whenever he lost it tight to Avasa. And then who, he got recently knocked out by someone, too, didn't he? No, I think Ty was his last fight. Was it really? I, I want to say, oh, well, he was going to fight Spivak or whoever it was, but they got canceled. Yeah, dude, I, I don't know. Like, whenever I see um, Greg Hardy fight, I feel like there's definitely, like, something in there. Like, I see the potential in him. Um, he's decent in front of the mic. Um, Shit, his his fucking rap sheet isn't the best, but hey, you know he has he's in the UFC and a lot of people want to see him get fucked up, and they're seeing it, and that's why he's always um counted out. But as far as this fight goes, dude, um, it's pretty fucking close, cause I could definitely see Greg Hardy winning this one, but I think if it goes past the first round, I don't think um Greg Hardy beats him. I think the only chance that he has is in the first round, and if he gets that first round knockout. I think that's his only chance. If um Spivak establishes dominance in the first round, I it's gonna be his fight. And I think he'll he'll finish him in round two. So for this fight, I'm gonna have to go with Spivak round two. I also have this uh as one of my over under bets. Um I think the over under is at 10 minutes and I have it under, so we'll see what's up. Did you predict already? No. Not yet. Um, I mean, I was kind of on the fence with this one. There, I mean, it's a pretty close fight. I feel like neither of them show like any kind of overwhelming. I guess um, like anything that kind of stands out. Just for the sake of uh, the last fight with Ty, I think Greg Hardy comes in, makes a difference. I'll go knockout round one change it up for him yeah. i'm going to uh, spin uh, knockout round two i even think he might get a, a submission win but hey who knows fuck it um all right guys so right into the next one <clears throat> we have the return of my boy kevin fucking trailblazer holland versus alex cowboy Oliveira. uh this rank 14 that you see up here is the rank that he was at in middleweight and now he's actually going down to welterweight. And I hope and pray to God his weight cut's going good. And if that's the case, dude, I'm just going to throw it out there. No fucking fluff in this one. I have a strong feeling that Kevin Holland's going to knock him out in the first round. I don't know exactly how much, but I know it'll be inside the first round. 
And that's another one of my over under picks. And I think the over under was at uh one and a half rounds. So I think I think it's a fair bet. So you count me in on it. Kevin Holland round one knockout. I have Kevin Holland round two knockout, but I think it's gonna be like a TKO. Probably get him on the ground and then finish him via ground and pound. I can see Kevin Holland working him in there. Uh, so I'm going to get Kevin Holland round two, knockout TKO. <clears throat> all righty, all righty. You, you don't have faith in Cowboy at all? I mean, he's an exciting fighter, but I just think uh, Holland has way more to the table. Isn't, he on, isn't, bigger, isn't he on a losing streak experience. as well? Yeah, I think he lost to his last two fights. He got knocked out of one of them, I believe. I want to say we saw him fight. What what event was it? UFC 261. It was the Masvidal and Usman, the second one. I remember that. And then he did lose. Um, he looked pretty good, but Randy Brown ended up getting him. And then that's right. He did fight Nico Price right after. Yeah, definitely a tough matchup for um, Alex Oliveira. I, I, I mean, dude, it, to be fair, you have Kevin Holland. He's over here. He blew through the fucking. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't say he blew through it, but. He made a big enough impact in the middleweight division, and I feel like if his weight cut goes well, um, he's going to do the, exactly the same over here in, uh, at welterweight. And on top of that, he's like one of the UFC ca uh, cash cows. So he brings the views, he brings in the hype, and I'm pretty sure they want to build him up. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a fair pick. Um, all right, moving on. This I'm not going to lie. This is the fight that I was kind of iffy or, you know what I mean? This is the only one that I have a feeling that I... I just didn't know. And, well, the RDA and Fizzy fight, but obviously it changed since then. Um, my initial take on it, dude, was that Essen Barbosa is a fucking animal, dude. He, he does have a, a really good, um, like, resume as far as who he's fought. Um, as far as, like, him being successful on, on some of them, uh, I mean, he lost to Gige, he lost to Dan Ige, Paul Felder, Justin Gagey, Kevin Lee, Habib Nurmagomedov. But Neil Darius, Gilbert Melendres, Anthony Pettis, Tony Ferguson, he fought Paul, Paul Forder twice. Fucking Bobby Green. Like, dude, you he's fought so many fucking top fighters, and somehow he's still in the mix. I believe he was fighting at um at lightweight prior, and then I think he went down to uh feather. Yeah, to featherweight. That's why in this picture, it, I think that's a featherweight version of him. He looks fucking absolutely shredded, dude. He he looks fucking like a damn bodybuilder and shit but i mean i don't know i have faith in him if he wins it'll be inside the first round but i have a strong feeling that if bryce mitchell is able to withstand his hits uh do what he has to do um to not get hit and to ultimately just jab him up slow him down take him down on the ground as soon as that fight hits the ground it is over for edson barboza so with that being said i'm gonna have to go with bryce mitchell i think in round i think he gets it done in as a decision, actually, I think it'll be a decision. And again, this is another one of my over under picks as well. And um, I have it uh over two and a half minutes, I believe, is, is the over under. But yeah, dude, I, I mean, Bryce Mitchell is an interesting character. Very interesting. Ed, what you got? Yeah, I mean, this is one of the fights where I think both of these guys are pretty cool guys. I mean, Edson Barbosa has been in the game since. You know, over 10 years, fought a lot of guys. Um, RDA, Habib, a bunch of legends. And Bryce Mitchell, I mean, he's a stand-up guy. When he, Whenever you look at his things, even though he brings up controversial topics, you know, he at the end of the day, he's still passionate and loyal to his hometown. He said it himself. Um, you know, he just wants to prove people wrong. You know, the fact that he has to get a camp outside of where he lives. But he's staying true to Arkansas, so shout out to him, Razorback country. Um, so I think that's pretty cool, but I, I just feel like Edson Barbosa is going to be a true test for Bryce Mitchell. Um, and I think Barbosa, you know, he has, he says he has nothing to prove, but the fact that they're putting him in a fight like this, you know, they're kind of treating him like a gatekeeper at this point, similar to Giga, but I think Giga was just level the heads in terms of striking ability. Um, so I, I feel like Edson Barbosa here, I think he gets it done by decision. Um, I feel like he can, you know, outpace Mitchell's striking and he could avoid his ground, the ground game long enough. Um, he's fought the best wrestlers in the game. I don't see why he can't, you know, 
fend off Bryce Mitchell's ground game or grappling. Uh, but that's just what I got. That's what I'm going to go with uh, tomorrow. I mean, there's a lot of toss-ups this card. I'm not going to oh, yeah. lie, so I'm pretty excited to see where everything goes. For me personally, this was the, the biggest fucking toss-up of them all. I'll be honest. I, I remember I was telling Ed earlier that, dude, like, Barboza is a fucking dog. But after doing a little bit of research, I, I have a firm believer in Bryce Mitchell. And, hey, let's hope he gets a fucking other Twister uh, submission in there. That'll be fucking crazy. But, you know, I don't know. We'll, ju- we'll just have to wait and see. I think this is his first time fighting on pay-per-view, maybe. I could be wrong. He got his camel shorts in. Debut Venom camel shorts. Hey, I'm going to cop some of those. <laughs> I'm gonna just wear them. Um, alrighty, guys, let's uh get into the co-main event. Originally, it was Rafael Dos Anjos versus uh Rafael Faziv, but now we got Renato Maicano, which, if you recall, he fought two weeks ago. I had to give him a quick recap. Yeah, Renato Maicano fought against uh, I believe it was Joel Hernandez. Um, it pretty much bullied him in terms of uh, just, like, the grappling aspect. It ended up, I think, catching him with the rear naked, right? I yeah. want to say. Yeah. <clears throat> Caught him with the rear naked, got a, got his back pretty soon in the second round. So, man, the, I mean, the way he was able to finish the last fight, him taking this one last second against RDA, one of the most respectable fighters, you know, in all of them. Days. It's pretty, you know, heads up to him. Pretty cool for taking this fight. Um, I mean, I respect Hinata Moicano. He has very good jujitsu. Um, you know, he has good length. Uh, I think he outlands already in terms of height and reach and leg reach and wingspan and everything. Um, so I think his striking might not be an issue, neither will his grappling. But, you know, I believe that RDA, you know, he's just, he's been a guy that's, he's been around the block and he's just itching to get another dub, you know. Um, he kind of just cement his legacy even further former interim champ, I want to say. So, I don't know. I have RDA winning this one by by decision. Let me know nice. what you got. <clears throat> Before I let you know what I got, uh, we need to pay some respects to the chat. We've been ignoring you guys since this started. El Vato Chris, he called me out, uh, or he called us out. I love being ignored. <clears throat> well, you know why you're being ignored, Chris. Coming out, coming out with all that hate. You know where I'm going to be at this weekend. If you want some, run up. What's up, homie? What's good? Talking all that shit. Twitter fingers center trigger fingers, baby. What's up? No, I'm just kidding. But in all, in all uh, seriousness, yeah, there's there's a lot of fucking activity in there. Hey, shout out to my boy Jim. He, he can boo me all he wants, but, you know, I, I love that guy. That's my boy. That's my day one. Um, <clears throat> uh, Lionel commas. I can't wait to watch it with you guys. Lionel's going to be there. Special appearance? Hell yeah. That's what's up. Uh, Bryce Mitchell via camel shorts. <laughs> what the fuck is he gonna take off his shorts and like choke him with them or what? Uh, guess Ed doesn't want the belt. Kevin thumbs up. Yeah, the fucking the the chat be uh active as fuck. But shout out to my boy uh Jim Five O. Love that guy. Um. All right, so RDA and Renato Moicano. Um. Whenever the fight between RDA and Rafael Faziv was announced, I immediately had uh, Faziv. I think he's on a tear. And not that Rafael is a, is a gatekeeper, but he is. I think he does have at least one foot out or at least thinking on his way out. Although on the embedded, he said that he is uh, looking to fight for the title again and all that great stuff. Which, you know, hey, like he could very much do it. Fucking Glover Teixeira at the age that he's at and he's already and you did and he's the champ. You know, I mean, it's very well possible. But in the lightweight division, I don't know. I don't, I do not fucking know. And I don't even want to test the waters there. Um, But against Renato Maicano, I think the biggest factor on this was the biggest factor that we saw in last week's fights with um, Bobby Green and Islam Makachev. Although um, Renato Maicano had a little bit more of a gap, I think he was told an even shorter notice. So, I don't know, guys. That's that's a hard sell for me. Renato Maicano, if he has it, he he fucks him up. And if you know if he does, you know, big respects to him. 
that'll really boost him um, up in the lightweight division. But I don't, I wouldn't see him getting too far there. I think he has a, he has a ways to go. But um, in short, I got RDA uh, decision as well. Yeah, and, um, I mean, yeah, RDA is a guy. He's like I said, he's been around the block, fought against the best people, former champ, everything. So I, I just think he holds off, and not you know, I don't think this. I, I think the physique fight probably would have been a better fight for him. Um, <clears throat> but I think I'm about to I'm about to flip a pick right now. Oh, um, first, hey, somebody clip this so he doesn't get a bad mouth itch, though. All right, Sergey Spivak versus Greg Hardy. Um, I don't trust Greg Hardy that much to to go against um, you know, Spivak. So I think this is gonna be a good flip. I don't see Hardy getting a dub. Um, I don't know. My guts just tell me Hardy's not gonna get that. Uh, so flipping Sergey Spivak. Uh, I'm just gonna go. Second round finish. Try it, Ed. It happens sometimes. I do that shit, or I think about it, but I never pull the trigger whenever I'm doing them with you. Um. Uh. Yeah. I guess I'm reading the comments. I I apologize, Aaron. These fucking sunglasses are dark as fuck. Sometimes it's kind of hard to really see what's uh, over there on the comment section. But yes, because I think you're on my display. Your color orange and Lionel's uh yellow. I mean pink. And when you put the shades on, it they're pretty fucking identical. So I just uh, saw the colors wrong. But yes, Aaron, we're gonna finally meet. We're gonna eat some B dubs. We're gonna have a good fucking time. You already know what's going on. UFC 272 gonna be on Saturday. So you know where we're gonna be. That being said, let's get right into the main event of the fucking evening. Colby Chaos Covington at rank number one versus rank number six, George Gamebred Maz B. All Ed, kick it off. What do you think? You know, going into this, <laughs> I was a seventy-five percent leaning towards Colby's way, but just the fact that you came out here with negative energy, um, I can't let you keep that belt. So, um, I'm not gonna bust a Gonzo and just lean just for the belt's sake. I'm gonna go one hundred percent all in Street Judas, Game Bread, Game Bread <laughs> FC. 2003 street balling with that boy Kimbo Slice. I think George Masvidal, Jorge Masvidal, whatever you want to call him, gets it done. Um, and in fact, I have this by a catalyst as well. I think he gets it done by decision. <laughs> I think both of these guys stand and bang. I think it's going to be similar to like a Kamaru Kobe fight where um, Kobe took really took it to you know to the stand up with Kamaru, tagged him, got tagged. <laughs> I think George does the same thing. Um, they're both. I think they're both underestimating each other. Dan Lambert said it. So I'm going all in, Street Judas, by decision. So two weeks ago, or actually last week, Ed was advocating for freedom, for America, land of the free, home of the brave, but now he's switching up and going communism on us. Hey, it's right, Ed. You, uh, you're, you're just exposing whoa, yourself. Whoa, what do you mean? It's all right, baby. You're going. Masvidal was born in Miami, bro. Well, he, I don't his, know. his origins are from. Masvidal, uh, that, his origins are from Miami's Cuba. Miami's America. Nah, his origins are from from, from Cuba. He's he a, born he's in a, Miami, bro. He's a, he's a fake liberal. He's a fake liberal. He doesn't know how laws are passed. He. Uh, I think he, they're both he, Republican. He he takes hand. He calls himself a Republican, but he takes handouts. You already know what. If you watch the the press conference, hashtag exposed by my boy Colby Covington. We're out here representing. U.S. fucking A. And just like that, I think this uh, Covington's going to take the dub. I don't have to explain shit. I think the resume speak for themselves. The odds speak for themselves. And regardless, America always wins, baby. Kobe Covington, decision. Well, that was my promo. Wow. But, decision. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, also, uh, I got uh, the <laughs> Shui Vasa. I, I actually don't know how it works. If not, I would have done it for you guys, but I don't get what this straw right here on the bottom's for. Um I think it's to like get weird. air. Yeah, it's to get air in or something. And then it has another straw that comes up on top. 
and then you just uh you open there's a little little valve right here you open it and you just take it but yeah guys i i'll for real I'll gym 50 all oh, that yeah. hype just for call just for a decision that's why i was surprised you said decision as well what's the difference but i didn't hype it up like you did I, well, it's gonna be a banger. I mean, yeah, you, I, I'll give you that one. I'll give you props on that one. It's it's gonna be a banger think, though. Because I mean, even their former coach Dan Lambert said that, you know, Masvidal is gonna underestimate Kobe's uh, striking, but Kobe's gonna underestimate Masvidal's takedown defense. So we're just gonna see what happens. I mean, if these guys really don't like each other, they're gonna fucking hit each other. Kobe's not gonna just fucking <laughs> go for a dub. Um, Via, you know, Kamar Usman and Masvidal won, where, you know, Usman played it safe and just, you know, still t uh, toe stomped. Uh, you know, <laughs> I think if Kobe really doesn't like the guy, he's going to go out there and try to hit him, which I think he's capable of. I mean, we've seen it. Fool's a fucking crazy ass fighter. Mm -hmm. um, Jensen 20 said they're, they're besties. It's fake news. Hey, if they're besties and they're making this up, then they're damn good businessmen. Shout out to both of them. Hey, Ed but and either I, way, Ed, we're, I think Ed, Ed I think and I are for a treat. Ed and I are beefing right now, and this is all fake news. Ed and I love each other. After this, we talk and, you know, all that great stuff. Yeah, so. in, about, in about five years, we're going to split up, and I'm going to fuck Gonzo up, and um, it's going to be off for show. Yeah, guys, if we ever blow money. up, please don't clip this, but if we ever blow up, we're going to start fake beef and then fight uh, YouTube boxing box. Yeah, on, on Triller Fight Club. Just give us 10 years, and then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be rich. Um, but, yeah, Ed... You're not going to a baptism, dude. You're going to a fucking funeral, dog. Cal Covington, he's going to beat him. I, I, and you know what, I, to, to, I guess, like, go against what you were saying earlier, like, in all honesty, like, no bullshit right here. Um, I can kind of see what you mean by, like, Kobe fighting with, like, emotion and, like, wanting to knock his head off as well. But I honestly think that at that level, especially with all the publicity that Covington has had in the past, Versus Coving um Usman on the first fight, Tyrone Woodley, Usman on the second fight, um, and now uh Masvidal, I feel like he knows how to compose himself, act when he needs to, put on the the whole um shenanigans when he has to, to sell the fights, whatever, things like that. So um <clears throat> I think he's gonna go in there pretty well composed. I don't think there's no emotions on both ends. I I'll speak for both of them. I think Masvidal, he understands it as well. They're just going on there in there to sell the fight, um, respectfully. I but I, obviously there is a little bit of the that grudge match, you know what I mean, where they want to fucking fight each other or whatever. You know, they want to like actually do something and and make a statement, which is very well possible. But I feel like at this state of well, their I career, just feel like neither of these guys could talk the much as much shit as they did, and not have it be a be a freaking a DS type of fight where they're just fucking hitting each other in the face. Well, I mean, uh, to be fair. Uh, Usman and Masvidal it kind of went that way you know what I mean uh, I think that was one of the highest selling pay-per-views uh, of all time at, not, not of all time but in, M in UFC history I think it's like rank 7 behind all of Connors and shit and um, well, you saw what happened it was nothing but foot stomps but the shit. stakes were different Usman was fighting for the title Usman was defending the title actually Masvidal was fighting for the title Usman just wanted to win Usman needed to win yeah. this is different this is a grudge match both of them have already lost to Usman <clears throat> twice. Both of them have been KO'd, TKO'd by Usman once and then lost the other one by decision. Mm -hmm. You know, at this point, wh whoever wins obviously is going to get that leg up in the rankings, but does it really matter? They didn't want to fight Usman again. They already lost twice. This is this is their fight. This is <clears throat> the the this is the bottom, you know, half of the welterweights time to shine. You know, I'm not saying that they're the bottom half because obviously they're they're some of the best in the welterweight division. Yeah, like top one percent. Um, you know, this is their time to shine. This is the grudge match. This is the fight they have to make. And if they're gonna fight, it's not gonna be John Jones, Rashad Evans, where they had this little beef, and then you know John Jones kind of bullies Rashad Evans on the ground. You know, that was kind of a grudge match too. But it was also once again for the title. This is for the title. This is built up beef for I don't know <laughs> four or five years. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the the emotion you have with a friend when you get mad at them, it's real emotion because you really get mad at them. And then afterwards, like, oh, you know, we're buddies, fine. But these guys aren't friends anymore. So that emotion, I mean, it's it's obviously still there. And then again, it's not. So I, I feel like, you know, they're professional fighters, grade A. 
they know how to compose themselves come fight day, but still it I, I just don't see them fighting a strategic technical fight. I think it's more of a, I'm going to try to hit you a little bit more than you hit me, um, which is what I'm hoping. Uh, I mean, well, fuck. We'll see. I mean, dude, uh, don't get me wrong. I, I really hope that this fight is a fucking, like, a straight-up banger. Like, from the casual slash fan perspective, like, I really want this fight to be, like, on on their feet, just fucking throwing bombs and shit. You know, both of them trading, getting good shots in. Uh, ultimately, Masvidal is going to be winning uh, up on the feet. But, I mean, that that's just, you know, a fucking, I guess, a fairy tale to me. I, I, I still believe that, that Covington's going to go in there and he's going to you know, uh, be strategic as well as Masvidal. You know what I mean? It, it goes both ways. Both of them need to come in with the strategy because I feel like as a fighter, you would assume that, hey, like if I'm Covington, you'd assume that Masvidal is going to come up and wanting to fuck me up, right? So you got to find a way around that to win. And the same thing with Masvidal. Hey, I know this motherfucker knows that I got I got stand-up game, um, but I got to really protect that ground game. You know what I mean? So it's, dude, honestly, like this kind of might be like a, like a, like a hot take, but I I actually think that maybe it's it's possible that one of them actually gets a submission. I don't I don't know if Jorge Masvidal has any submissions under his belt, but I know Covington does. So if there's a submission by either one of those fighters, I will not be surprised. Um, but fuck guys, like I said, UFC 272 this Saturday. We're just gonna have to wait and see. All our answers are are all of our questions are gonna be answered. But till um till then. Ed and I will continue to disagree until a winner is pronounced. Ed, it's been a while. Is there going to be any money on the fucking line? What are the odds looking like over here? Let me see. Think Plus like 250, <laughs> minus 320. I, I could do a straight 10. I was about to say that. I was like, I like $10. That's fair. Um, I can do a straight 10. Hey, hey, 10, 10 and then a... Uh, Loser takes a shot. I'm down. All right. You guys already heard it there first. Hey, Buster Nut 29 wants me to win him in the house. Plus oh, Nut, that's uh, right. You're yeah. not going to like my parlay of the day, but uh, I'll let you know in just a second whenever Gonzo finishes his thought. Um, fuck, I, I, I don't have too many more thoughts uh, on my head. Let's just get right into it. Ed, parlay of the day. You All right, so <clears throat> my favorite time of the week, UFC fight night. Um, I was floored between a few fights, but this is what I got. It's parlay of the day. We're going to pick three fights this week. Um, pick all of these. I'm going to put some money on this. Um, hopefully these fighters come through. I am currently 0-1, but I'm going to try to make some money for y'all. Remember, you don't really have to listen to me. As Gonzo said, disclaimer, we're not financial advocates or you know, advisors. Counselors. Hashtag Whatever not say. Yeah. We're not financial advisors. Hashtag do whatever the fuck you want. It's your money, but uh, this is where my money is going. I don't know. Aaron said better for local shotgun. I don't think they sell four locals at uh at Buffalo Wild Wings, but uh yeah, we'll we'll bet a shot. If they have proper on deck, oh we can do proper. So um, we're going first fight. We're gonna jump into the prelims, prelim, uh feature prelim of the night. Jalen Turner versus Jamie Malarkey. Jalen Turner is a nice, lengthy, um, lightweight. They call him the tarantula. Three straight finishes in the last three fights. Two of them by submission, actually. And what, one of them by, fighter I was this? first My round, no second round knockout. This what? is feature prelim, prelim of the night. Um, so we're going to add Jalen Turner versus Jamie Malarkey. Get some nice odds. Jalen Turner, minus 155. You know, damn near even. So that's pretty good. Second, we are going to go with the favorite. Um, a pretty decent favorite, too. Uh, you're going to get Kevin Holland. Versus Alex Oliveira. Kevin Holland is going to be a safe bet. Um, he just adds so much more than Oliveira uh, to his game. I think he can overpower him on the ground. I think he can finish him via submission. Rear naked choke. Uh, ground and pound him. We've already seen Kevin Holland. I feel like all Alex Oliveira doesn't have that facet of the game. Um, so we're going to go Kevin Holland. We're going to add that to the parlay. Remember, this is going to be a three-fight parlay. So don't worry. we got another one coming. And we're going to get our first underdog to add. It is going to be Edson Barbosa versus Bryce Mitchell. Edson Barbosa has fought the best of the best. Habib Nurmagomedov, um, you know, all those great lightweights. But ever since he's joined the featherweight division, he's actually been on a little steamroll. He's had um, a few wins. Uh, he did lose to Dan Ige. However, he knocked out Shane Burgos in his, um, you know, couple fights ago. 
prior to fighting Giga Chikadze, losing to Giga is no, you know, pushover. It's Giga Chikadze. We saw how hot he can be. Barbosa does have wins over Dan Hooker as well. So we're going to go with Edson Barbosa um, winning this one. Bryce Mitchell, I don't think he can hold off this fight for his very first test. Um, so, yeah, Edson Barbosa, Jalen Turner, and Kevin Holland. That's going to be my three-fight parlay. Nice. Nice. I Bus- Bussina said he's out because he has Bryce Mitchell. Sorry about that, bud. <laughs> All right. Well, here, here's... We had to get an underdog. That's the one I want. Yeah, here, here's my turn. Um, bust the nut. Let, let me see if you fuck with my price picks over under. It's kind of uh, underrated in my opinion. But before I get into that, I completely forgot that one of the Nermaga Medovs is going to fight on this fucking card. So, guys, if you have nothing to do around 3 o'clock when, this, when the early prelims start, these are completely free. They might be on ESPN. If not, you could find it for sure um, on the ESPN website. You have... Um, Oh, fuck. Did they move it? Oh, no, no, no. This is, this is still the regular prelims. I'm talking about the early prelims. So these start around 3 o'clock. And the, the fight that I want to uh, give a shout out to is Brian Kelleher and Umar Nomagomedov. I, I don't know. Too, I've heard that name, Ed. Brian Kelleher a lot. I don't know too much about him, if I'm be honest. But you have. Yeah, he's fought a couple times last year. Yeah, you have the fucking beast and Usman. I mean, Usman. Umar Nomagomedov. Dude, I I think this guy is the future of the featherweight division. Um, Islam, Habib, and their whole team have said it that they believe that Umar is the most skilled and the most talented. And I I heard a podcast over this weekend, and they were saying that Umar actually has really great striking, and he throws a question mark kick numerous of times. So I'm gonna be looking out for this fight. I this is his first fight I think in like over a year and a half. Um, so it's gonna be good, and he's in the feather, uh, in the bantamweight division actually. And I think like how Ed and I were talking, the bantamweight is probably the most stacked. That's where you have um, fucking uh, Jan, uh, Peter Jan, Aljamain Sterling, fucking all of those guys. Uh, yeah, I don't know, guys. It's this is the def- this is a fight to definitely look up. This might be uh the the low key banger or whatever what you want to say, but I, I definitely um, want to watch this fight. Um, let's see. Bryce looks like he fights for street beefs. <laughs> he very mel- he very well probably does. That feels crazy. He has his own farm, and I don't even think he has a job. He just grows crops, and he, he eats off of that. Uh, Bustin' Nut Kelleher is going to shart. Shart his shorts again. Did he shit his shorts? That's fucking probably. terrible, dude. I'll, I'll look that up off. Um, all right. Well, <clears throat> so I actually wanted to go over the, the over under picks as well, since we're talking about bets and all that crazy stuff. I showed Ed, he, he, he actually likes it. Um, so on price picks, uh, it's an over under projected time bet. So basically like, for example, you have Umar and Brian Kelleher, their over under is 12 and a half minutes. So basically you, the viewer says, oh, that fight's going to go over 20, uh, 12 and a half minutes which is three, three and a half rounds or um, two and a half rounds, or it's going to go under two and a half rounds. So, and that's how you place your bets. You get a number of fight of fights and you place them that way on this one. I actually have a four leg. So I put 10 down to win a hundred. My first uh, fight is uh, Umar and Brian Kelleher. I think that fight's going to go under um, 12 and a half minutes, which, which is uh, two and a half rounds. The next fight I have is the Spivak and the Greg Hardy fight. The over under for this fight is seven and a half minutes, which is um, one round and a half. And I have this fight going under as well. I believe one of them by then will get a knockout. Um, then the next one I have is Kevin Holland and, and Alex Oliveira. I believe this fight's going to be under as well. The, the over under is 10 minutes, which is two rounds. I definitely see this fight going under two rounds. It's, I think it's going to, I mean, I told you guys, I think it's going to finish in uh, the first round. And then my last pit or my last bet was the Bryce Mitchell fight. And I believe this fight will go over 12 and a half rounds. Um, just where they're, where they're both at in their career. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's going to go over, uh, over 12 and a half. Um, so I said 12 and a half rounds, 12 and a half minutes, which is, um, two and a half rounds. So like I said, I put down $10. And if I hit every single one of these bets, I get a payout of $100. So it's not a, it's not a bad bet in my opinion. So 
If you guys don't know about that, check it out. I, I argue with Ed that I think it's like a more safer, easier bet, but you you have to like hit them, you know what I mean? Um But yeah, uh fuck Ed, what what what's the next thing? Gambling's gambling, it's all the same. Of course you have to hit it. I mean, regardless if you bet the house or not, but gambling's all the same. <clears throat> yep. Um but lastly, we have been hyping up El Vato Chris. Um, he is currently Rear Naked Takes fan champ. Um, he was supposed to have a challenger, Eric. However, Eric has recently stepped out of the fight, so we found a last-minute replacement. Due to COVID-19. A la uh, Bobby Green, a la Hinata Moicano. Um, Ten-day replacement, actually three days. Um, so we have a new challenger. If you guys have been tuning in, it is Busta Nut 29 Gonzo. Cue it up. Yes, sir. All righty, guys. Get the tell of the tape going. Yes, sir. Let me get that music going. All right. So we have El Vato Chris, champion. Um, weighing, or he's he's 24. He's 5'6", weighing in at 235 pounds. His reach is 62 inches. He is a major underdog. Repeat, major fucking underdog at a plus 450, going up against. Bust a nut at rank number one in the Rear Naked Takes rankings. We don't know his fucking age. He is 6'7", 295 pounds with the reach of 75 inches. And the odds for that, he is a slight favorite at negative 225. Ed? So this is starting to look like what do you uh, think? Oliveira Islam opening <clears throat> odds where Oliveira, the current champ, is going to be a significant underdog. So currently right now we have El Vato Chris. He is 2 and 0. Oh. Bustin' Nut is making his debut, but he's already the number one contender, uh, just being that he hasn't lost yet. Let me go ahead and read off their picks. Oh, wait, 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 wait before um, you... So for the first fight... Before, or, go ahead. Should should we... I feel like we should make a pick as far as who's going to win, but should we say it after you read the picks or before? Yeah, we'll go after. We'll okay. go after. All right, so for the first fight, Sergey Spivak versus Greg Hardy. El Valto Chris went Greg Hardy. Bustin' Nut 29 went Sergey Spivak. Already a difference. For the second fight, we have uh, Edson Barbosa against Kevin Holland. I mean, uh, sorry, Alex Oliveira against Kevin Holland. El Valto Chris went Alex Oliveira. Uh, Busta Nut 29 went Kevin Holland. For the third fight, Edson Barbosa versus Bryce Mitchell. Both of these, um, both of these guys picked Bryce Mitchell. And then, whoa. Busta Nut, I did not see uh, your pick for the RDA fight. You got to send me that real quick. Drop it in However, the comments. Drop for, it in the comment. For the main event, um, El Vato Chris went George Street Judas Masvidal and Busta Nut went Chaos, um, Colby Chaos Covington. So significant differences. Uh, we have about one, two, three differences already. So <laughs> I don't see a tie coming. Obviously, the tiebreaker is going to be the main event. Um, Busta Nut, I need your pick right now for the RDA fight. Yes, sir. But other than that, I mean, looking at these cards, I got to say... You got RDA I decision. RDA decision. Okay, so they got that. Q breaking same. news. Right, so, I, I think... Um, man, I don't want to count Chris out. I never want to count him out. But, you know, his his card's looking a little sketchy. Um, <clears throat> ooh, I just feel like Kevin Holland's not going to lose. And, you know, I, I don't know if Greg Hardy got it in him. So... Uh, I might have to place my money on Bustin' Nut this time. I don't know, chat. Let me know who y'all got, but I think Bustin' Nut comes out and is the new champ. What do you think, Gonzo? Look, dude, I think it's very, very, very obvious. One, before I start, El Vato Chris with those Twitter fingers be talking all that noise about me disrespecting my name, disrespecting where I come from, what I stand for. But guess what? This is why we have Bustin' Nut. Busted Nut 29, look at his fucking, uh, the tail of the tape. Dude, we don't know how fucking old this guy is. Dude, he could be fucking in his 80s or he could barely be 15. He's standing at a whopping six foot seven. I've never met anybody that fucking tall in my life. At 295 pounds, this guy's a natural born fucking athlete. With the reach of 75 inches, you gotta be fucking kidding me, dude. Holy shit. And especially those odds, negative 225, Chris, you, have, you do not have a fucking chance. You're an underdog for a reason. Although you're our, the, the rear naked take number one uh, fan champion, I think it's time for a hashtag and new. Let me get a hashtag and new in the chat, please. 
I don't think you have a chance, Chris. And just like your weird Snapchat says of you going, we'll find out Sunday, baby, because on Sunday, we're going to have a new Rear Naked Takes number one fan. Let's go, Bustin' Out. You got this repping Hulkamania. Hey, but I, I respect Chris's uh, American flag, though. That's Chris the is the reigning, defending, undisputed Rear Naked <laughs> Takes number one fan champion. El Vato Chris is 2-0. and oh. Jensen 20 putting in the comments and new. Remember, El Vato Chris took her out. Lionel Kamas, wherever you're at, El Vato Chris took you out. Um, El Vato Chris, I'm not picking you this week. Sorry, buddy. I didn't like your picks, but you are the champion for a reason. So I got to give you your praise, my boy. Um, everybody else is just noise. Go into the fight. Keep your composure. We've seen upsets before. If it happens again, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but yeah, that's what we got going. Winner yeah. is going to be the new champ. <clears throat> yeah, guys. So um, in closing, um, this weekend is going to be a fucking banger, guys. So, again, if you guys aren't doing anything, I highly advise you guys to go watch this fight. You have a fucking stack card, I believe, in the main card and even that that early prelim that I mentioned earlier. So, again, guys, um, check it out. You know, we're, we're, we might have a, a new Rear Naked Takes champ. Uh, I don't know, Aaron. I'm climbing the ranks. Hey. Hey. I I know we'll, I don't we'll see how your picks go this weekend. We'll yeah. see how your picks go this weekend, Aaron. Yeah, I don't I don't uh I don't know, Aaron, dude. You might just be the next contender. So you, we just gotta stay put. We gotta get we gotta get through this uh this weekend and then and then we'll negotiate after for the for 273, which is coming up pretty quick. But other than that, guys, I'm Gonzo. That's Ed. We are rear naked takes. Thank you everybody for uh um, Judas, baby. Thank you everybody for, Judas. for for stopping by. Showing the love and support. Come on, guys. You already know that I put on a gimmick. I love every single one of you. I love Chris. I love all of my haters. It's all good, guys. But um, yeah, Ed, we always see his Ed's tricep. He's flexing real quick. The, the fans. But um, but yeah, guys, again, thank you for uh for stopping by, commenting, showing some love. If you're on uh Twitch, remember to go over to YouTube. We got a lot of content going. If you're on YouTube, make sure to head over to Twitch to watch us live and interact with us. And you might be the next contender for the Rear Naked Takes number one fan. Um, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, you know the deal. Rear Naked Takes. We will see you guys ne on Monday for the post show of UFC 272. Also remember, we're going to be at B-Dubs uh, at West Shaw. So if you're in the neighborhood, stop by. Me and greets, pictures, signatures, all that great stuff. Remember. Turn that bitch down. Exactly. We're going to shut that shit down. Security clearance. There's going to be lines out the door. and also. You guys can buy us as much drink as you want, but we're not buying you guys shit. Until then, guys, everyone have a great night. We will see you guys on the post show. Thank you.